well as a frequent flyer or an air traveler concerns on delayed flights flight disruptions are often the most common headaches you have to deal with now it's good to know that the nigerian civil aviation authority ncaa is there for you as an organization and agency saddled to ensure that consumer rights are protected now to expand the conversation and focus on the show this morning i'm joined by the ncaa director consumer protection uh, and public affairs mr michael achimugu good to see you sir thank you very much good morning uh, mr achimugu is not alone he's also joined uh, by the delectable ifeko abdul malik good morning to you ma'am good morning now, now, I'd like to begin with a, a popular position in Nigeria now, and especially in relations to the industrial action that grounded the airports and flight operations owing to organized labor's decision to embark on a strike. Now, we've had perspectives from legislators and well-meaning Nigerians wondering if there could be a regulatory power that prevents such going forward. That would be my first question before we look at other programs and activities of the NCAA in the interest of consumer protection say that again <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. my first question will be on the recent industrial action that disrupted flight operations in nigeria persons are wondering does the nca have any regulatory power to forestall such an occurrence going forward um not exactly you know um prior to this strike action there was a picketing of Turkish Airlines in, uh, in Lagos, you know, and then we found ourselves in a situation where the airline said they had a court injunction, you know, against such picketing, against their operations. And then the union said they had a previous, from 2020, I think, um, court uh, ruling that permits them to do these things. However, while I'm still studying the documents, after my um, appearance on another TV station um, a few days ago, where I, I spoke against airports being the target of strike actions, um, I've ha had a phone, one or two phone calls telling me um, that in our books, aviation workers are not even supposed to be members of unions. I have not verified this. I'm still studying documents and also what's in the constitution about these issues uh, but I, I, I think that until proper legislative uh, action is, 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 is concluded about issues like this it's not exactly our purview to make these decisions you must also remember that though we are the regulators of the industry the big brother sort of of the industry uh, we have sister agencies as well so aviation is a collective it's not just about the NCA alone you know and I'll come to you. Uh, it's on the concern of flight operations generally. There are regulations guiding how operations should be done. Frequent flyers will complain about certain airlines with uh, late announcements of change in flight schedule without informing flyers about these changes up until they miss their intended programs they were tra planning to travel for and they have issues of seeking for compensation. How do they go about it? Is there a channel through which they can report to the NCAA? What can be done about it? Um, we have numerous channels for reporting complaints. We have the NCAA website. Um, we have um, a CPD email. We have telephone numbers. Um, so if you have a complaint, you could send your complaint via any of these channels and they'll be addressed. Now, it's more so on informing Nigerians about their rights. I know there's an entire act on what the NCA says in terms of compensations to travelers who suffer from either flight delays or compensation. But often at times people say they don't know how to go through the process of litigation to be able to obtain such compensations as is due to them. As an agency of government, what steps has the NCA taken in recent times to ensure that passengers are duly compensated yeah uh, litigation is not the exact word you know uh, but yes the NCAA regulations of 2023 we call it part 19 you know um, is there to protect all stakeholders in aviation now if there is a disruption that aggravates a passenger the first step is report to the airline make a request or demand of the airline it is where the airline has failed to satisfactorily address the issue 
you now report to the NCAA. Like she has stated the channels through which you can report. Reports also come via social media most times. We get tagged to some of these posts, you know, and then we the Consumer Protection Department, which is what she referred to as a CPD, you know, for clarity's sake. Um, it's our duty and responsibility to investigate those issues and instruct the airlines to do the needful where necessary. But it's also important for passengers to understand that reporting a case doesn't mean you are right and due compensation, especially where the fault is the passengers or it is force majeure. Our regulations are very, very clear about all of these issues and I would urge, like I did last week and always, urge passengers to please study the regulations so that they know what their rights are and what their responsibilities are. For instance, if the cause of delay or cancellation is weather, the airline does not owe you compensation. If you do not understand these things, you, you'll be uh, crying aloof, more or less. Uh, pardon my, my grammar. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, so um, it's important we educate ourselves. That is why we have like the, the um, public service jingle you just aired. I hope you aired it again. <laughs> and repeatedly, <laughs> you know, and we are always very active on social media. I, for one, am always there on Twitter, uh, X, uh, responding to questions, inquiries, and all of that. We have our department has a 65% success rate with regards to refunds, you know, compensations, and the likes. The, one of the challenges we've been having, why people have thought hitherto that we're not working, is because when people come online and you know cry and complain. Everybody sees it, it spreads like wildfire. You know what they say about bad news. However, when we resolve those cases, those persons never come back to tell the same general public, hey, the NCA have resolved this issue for me. You know, but we keep trying our best to put out, uh, you know, this information out there. And we are really, really working. Now, now, I must commend the agency for the public awareness creation through jingle materials like the ones we aired. But referring to the Regulation Act of 2015, especially Part 19, which you spoke about, 2023, 2023 uh, is there any plan on, on ground to also have that document more like uh, broken down so that the common man you know, can be able to know for sure that this is my right in terms of awareness creation? We have that. You do? We already have materials like that. So it channels of disseminations, how beyond... The traditional media and social media as well are there any other ways flyers at the airport absolutely. yes we have flyers absolutely. we have flyers we have booklets we you know we give them out during um, awareness campaigns and the rest so yes now i also talk about your boss uh, captain chris najomo uh we had some coverage of the part he played in being able to broker a relationship with the turkish airline following the inc incidents that happened under his leadership, there's been perceived media relationships with the NCAA. Is this intentional? Is it part of the ongoing reforms at the NCAA? Of course, definitely. Um, Captain Chris Nadomo, in just five months, has changed the, the entire architecture of the NCAA. He's been very focused on st um, st um, st ease of doing business, staff welfare, and of course, improved media relations. Because um, for the longest time, Nigerians have complained about not being aware of the existence of the NCA. You know, most times when people think aviation, they think fun. You know, uh, it's our duty. We owe it to the general public, you know, to bring this education and information to them, you know, where they are. And that's why you notice of recent, there's been a general shift from merely using traditional media to social media where our stakeholders largely are. You know, and it, it keeps improving. Now, wh whilst this is commendable in broken relationship, there's also the um, press release that many misconstrued. The one that says uh, there was an investigation of the United Nigeria's flight diversions and where the NCAA has its regulations on wet leased aircraft. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's some of the controversies with misinformation about policies of the agency as well. There's the debate on wet leased aircraft by some operators within the airline business in Nigeria, is this still part of the functions of the NCAA? Everything that's got to do with aircraft, airlines in Nigeria, falls under the purview of the NCAA. As the regulator, we regulate even our sister agencies, from FAN to NAMA and the rest of them. Um, 
misinformation is something that's common these days. And of course, because politics sometimes mixes with, you know, uh, public service, we have people, detractors, the type that the Honorable Minister referred to as puff puff experts, you know, um, seeking to create, misinform the public about a lot of these things. Our duty is to continue to um, assist journalists to maintain the highest possible ethical standards in news reporting. And that is why under Captain Chris Najomo, we have organized trainings, workshops, seminars for aviation um, journalists. Recently, just last week here, um, one of the such trainings um, completed in, uh, concluded in Ilorin for the group called LAC. LAC is the League of um, Aviation uh, you know, Correspondents in Lagos. Another one is being planned for a group called Ataka. Ataka is the Abuja uh, you know, um, part of uh, you know, the aviation uh, reporters. We will continue. The new NCAA under this present management is not going to sit back and be quiet about misinformation. We owe it a duty. Everywhere we see misinformation, we are going to counter it with the facts and the truth. You know, um, it's, it's, it's a duty that we owe the general public. However, and I have only had this position, that the general public, the flying public as well, owe a duty to themselves to seek out knowledge, to seek out information. You see, you are flying. Your life is at stake. Your money, you are paying premium airfares. You owe the least you can do is seek out the regulations. Know your rights, know your responsibilities. We'll continue to do our best in this regard. Now, on the responsibilities of passengers, like he rightly said, people look to look at the airlines in terms of compensations owed to them when their rights are infringed upon. But for a responsible flying public, what are some of the basic rules to abide by? First of all, when you're buying a ticket, know the terms and conditions attached to that ticket. That's usually the area where the problem starts from. Because most people go through agents and other areas to buy their tickets. When there are disruptions to the flight, one, they probably don't get information. Two, they don't know what they're entitled to because they don't understand the conditions attached to the ticket. Then for your destination, know what you're required to have for wherever you're going to, the ticket, visa requirements, health requirements and other things. Then be on time. Come to the airport in good time and um, pack your bags by yourself and, you know, things like that. You should, first of all, know the conditions attached to your ticket because that will determine the outcome of whatever disruptions you face. Now, there are some particular incidences that have happened outside the Nigerian airspace which we'll be referring to and in terms of packing baggages, there's a case of a Nigerian who was on board with a laser pen, which he claimed was going to be used for his presentation at a seminar he was to attend, not knowing that such pens and have been banned by such uh, travel restrictions in other countries. When Nigerians are departing Nigerian airports, is there any check measures or measures of further giving them information on such items that are considered contraband in other countries so we avoid such incidences? We recently started a campaign called Dangerous Goods, where we are creating awareness about, you know, items that you cannot board the aircraft with. Yeah. Um, the awareness has been ongoing by way of jingles, flyers, you know, and face-to-face -face conversations at the airport. Uh, however, I think that, I, I, I continue to say this, that as a, as a passenger, you should also educate yourself when traveling. You should research to know the same effort you put into researching your, say, holiday destinations, for instance, is the same effort you should put into trying to know what should or should not be carried on board. Well, what are that, your rights? But yeah, yes. well, beyond that, NC also mandated airlines to put at their check-in counters items allowed on board and not allowed on board. So you see that at um, yes, most which, airlines. Yes, which they have. Account. They have. Still, these things happen. Yeah. It means that the passengers are not alive to their responsibilities, responsibilities absolutely. because if we have mandated the airlines to put out this information and it's there, it's visible at the airport, if some of the terms of your ticket, all the terms and conditions of your ticket are stated clearly on an airline's website, it will be difficult for you to come tomorrow and say you didn't know because it's there. There's no other way they can inform you except making it visible. So when you come tomorrow and say 
you didn't know your ticket was non-refundable for instance and you're demanding a refund it becomes a problem i don't know if you understand this and so uh, our job is based within the ambit of the regulations so uh, so sometimes it um, it's a little bit difficult challenging when people apply sentiment to these things we cannot operate outside the regulations yeah. it's important for people to know this so if your travel agent is purchasing a ticket for you it's important sometimes to let your agent know look i want a ticket that is refundable flexible yeah flexible yeah. in case you know something arises yeah. tomorrow also some of the causes of these uh, de delays and, and issues generally are travel agents and because of this just last week in lagos we had invited um, all travel registered travel agents to a meeting so that we can begin to see how they too can help you know by way of their professional practice to reduce these flight disruptions if your agent is booking a flight for you, it's supposed to impute the passenger's email and phone number so that when uh, the airlines are contacting passengers with reports for information about flight delays, cancellations and stuff, the passenger can get it directly. Because what's been going on is that those emails and text messages get to the agent, but they in turn fail to relate to the, the passenger. Passengers. So the passenger still ends up arriving at the airport not knowing that his flight has been cancelled and begins to blame the airline. So we've had these meetings and we are, we're going to partner more and more with. In fact, the NCA is looking towards a full regulation of um, travel agents in Nigeria. Now, and if you're just joining us, you're watching Morning Express live on ADBN television and we're in a discussion with the Nigeria Civil Aviation Authority on programs and policies on the, the acting director general captain chris najomo and everybody represented is the director of consumer protection and public affairs mr michael achimugu who is not alone in the studio is also joined by the assistant general manager flight operations and adjudication ifeo Malik. Uh, if you have any questions or comments feel free to visit any of our social media platforms uh, you could drop them on our facebook instagram or x pages at adbn underscore tv you can also drop them on our webpage where you can live stream on www.adbntv.com forward slash live. Now, much on the informati informative part of passengers on their rights, he's highlighted the efforts by the agency in terms of agents who help Nigerians book flights. The operators uh, as well, uh, they also plans on board to have them have more user-friendly interfaces on their web pages where most Nigerians can book. The challenges this day, especially with network issues of the NIBBS, is that online payments are a challenge for Nigerian flying public, so they prefer to go through agents. Is there any uh, effort on ground to ensure that most airlines, to start with, have a user-friendly interface? Well, um, I'm not sure of the user-friendly interface as for making payments, but you know, as it affects passengers, for instance, we asked um, all airlines operating in Nigeria to ensure that on their portal they have conspicuous places where persons with disabilities can ask for assistance, can request for assistance while booking their tickets. So those are the kind of things we have spoken to the airlines about and ensure that they have enforced. So not too sure about payments. I'm, I mean, I'm just hearing but that. But for persons with disabilities. Persons with disabilities, we, we did that, yes. So now, now it's easier for them to book their tickets and request for assistance before getting to the airport. Now, even with persons with disabilities, there's always the case with reports of, uh, this one is not even on the agency's fault, is at the airports. Yeah. Uh, persons who help them into their wheelchairs or help with luggages have been often accused of extorting them. Is, I don't know if there's going to be a monetary, uh, uh, monetary team on ground to monitor such airport workers. I, I think organized labor even needs to come in in this part. Beyond picketing airports, how can they ensure that most of their workers under the airport workers unions within airports are not of the ha in the habit of extorting passengers, especially disabled persons who they need to give wheelchair assistance or help them with their baggages? The regulations are there to protect everybody. If you have been extorted, report report we have 206 consumer protection officers representing the ncaa at all the terminals in nigeria 
we have offices and desks at all of those terminals. If something untoward has happened at the terminal, ask for the NCA Consumer Protection Office there and report. A lot of the cases that even come to us are issues that could have been resolved instantly at the terminals if people were aware where to go. Um, there, there, there is no way to keep every airport 100%. I've traveled across the world as well. I've been extorted in other countries. These things happen everywhere. However, what should matter is repercussions for those actions. But those repercussions will not come if you do not report. The NCAA might be very effective, but we are not ghosts. Hmm. So until you report a case to us, by law even, when a case has not been officially reported to us, we do not have the right to act. That is why some of the social media uh, videos, you see, we, we may ignore some of them if they, they are not addressed to us. Because some of the stakeholders have a right actually to sue us if a case wasn't reported to us and we took it up against them. Now, this will bring me to my next question and is on how we define such cases in line with situations that are considered within and outside the control of certain airlines. Much like you said, the situations that need to follow due process in reporting. Uh, meanwhile, people find it difficult to clearly define who do I take this case to, where does it fall under, how do we go about defining such specific issues? Well, if a case is reported to NCA, we look at it, investigate, and then we can advise on the next line of action where it should go to. And um, I just want to address your question about um, extorting persons with disabilities. Really, that's the reason why we have mandated airlines to put on their portal that compulsory field where persons with disabilities can request for assistance. In fact, the travel agents also must inquire from persons purchasing tickets if there's a person requesting assistance so that the airline can make provisions for those people before they arrive at the airport. You know, so they don't need, they don't need other people who are not staff of the airline assisting them and which of course will lead to extortion and the rest. So that service is supposed to be available if you request for assistance. So that would also eliminate the extortion from touts and the rest. Well, quite interesting is the conversation this morning just to further enlighten air travelers, especially frequent flyers on some of their rights and their responsibilities as well. It's not enough to say it is my right. I deserve compensation. But do you know the responsibilities that you owe the airlines in line with the regulations as laid down under the NCA Act of 2023? Well, we'll take a short break and when we return, we'll look at some of the entry cases as captured in that act and uh, ways you can go about du duly reporting through the appropriate channels any complaints you have. Please stay with us. Well, thanks for choosing to stay tuned to ADBN Television and as we look to continue our discussions with the Nigerian Civil Aviation Authority, NCAA, this morning, it's on consumer protection and it's a public awareness segments of the show this morning on Ex uh, Morning Express as we look to highlight some of the regulations as captured in the NCAA Regulation Act of 2023. I still have with me Mr. Michael Achimogu and uh, Ifeoko Abdul Malik. Uh, it's more now on the contents of this document which before Nana had asked and she said it's been also simplified into pamphlets and uh, flyers. Uh, flyers for the flying public to be able to look at. But, but we've talked largely on regulations. Now, let's talk about the flying public, especially from a code of conduct, I'd like to call it, behavior while on board or within the airport terminals. Uh, there's been recent history in Nigeria with some passengers needing to be court-martialed following unruly behavior. Uh, what parts of the Act and what other regulations does the NCA have in terms of passenger behavior? Uh, really, passenger behavior is captured in the NCA regulations, uh, not part 19. 17. 17, yeah. yes. Uh, if we go here, is uh, our best regulations officer. Mm -hmm. So we all refer to her when we need to. Yeah. Uh, but that said, it, it should go without saying that no passenger should be unruly at the airport. I pers personally, I take this um, very seriously. Uh, most people are not aware that for unruly passenger behavior, you could you risk jail term and fines from between one 
million to 10 million naira. Because, I mean, passengers need to begin to understand that not every disruption is even the fault of the airline. It's a whole ecosystem and so many reasons could be uh, responsible for disruptions. In any case, most of these disruptions happen for safety reasons. And where especially it's a tech issue, weather problem, why do you want to, why do you insist on flying? You want to die? You want to fall from the sky? These are the issues that we must bear in mind. I understand the frustration with it. You just want to get from point A to point B. Some people have health concerns, business concerns, you know, career and all of that. But look, if you destroy property at the airport, how are you going to fly next time? Because you still want to fly. These are the issues. So I would like to urge the flying public to please, um, under no circumstances, be unruly at the airport. Or, or there will be consequences. This is why we have our CPOs, consumer protection officers, at the terminals. If anything aggravates you, go look to them. They will help and you lodge your complaints issues. with them. Yes. Right. I'll come to you as a certified adjudicator and in the role you play at the NCAA as assistant general manager in flight operations and adjudication. Uh, this document is one that has uh, has need for some legal background before. Uh, an ordinary person will go through it and understand the implications, like he said, that might also constitute a jail term. But in simple terms, for most of our viewers at home, some of the sections that outline punishable offences Nigerians look at when the habit of shouting or even getting into fiscoffs at air air airport terminals when we look to voice our grievances in either flight delays or cancellations outrightly. Could you go over some of this? parts either 17 19 or the teen lines or fine lines viewers at home should know well part 17 deals with unruly passengers and um, passengers should be of good behavior at all stages of their journey at the airport terminal or on board the flight passengers will not be allowed on board a flight if they're unruly if they're drunk you know any sort of behavior that will seem inimical to the safe operation of the flight and like he said, there's um, jail term, penalties, and fines for that. So that's basically it. He's also mentioned weather as well. Where we're getting into the raining season in Nigeria and most of the technical faults and the regulations that they have to clear before flights can take off have been concerns in recent times that owe to cancellations. Is there standard protocol on how to inform such passengers who often get angry that the flight has been cancelled? of the reasons as to why this flight has been cancelled? Yes. When um, there's a disruption to the flight, the airline owes the passengers information. That is something we stress all the time. 30 minutes into a disruption, the airline should inform the passengers of the disruption and the cost of the disruption, whether weather, technical, operational, any reason. NCA collects this information real time from the airlines and it's important that you know, all the time passengers are kept informed of service disruptions. Well, as we look in addition, okay, in addition to quickly, that. Um, airlines do owe passengers this information, but there are certain conditions that arise suddenly. For instance, if just before a flight, even if passengers have boarded a plane, before takeoff, a technical issue is discovered, or weather report from NIMED suddenly, you know, says, look, don't take this flight, the airline has the responsibility to cancel that flight or delay it uh, in, in the list. And in, in that scenario, you can't say information the airline w did not tell you before. It, it is yeah. happening yeah. real time, yeah. on time. Yeah. So it, passengers should know that for safety, for their own safety, flights can be canceled in such situations. The last time I was uh, with the other TV station, um, I, I, I had mentioned uh, a particular journalist who had called, you know, from the Abuja domestic saying you know the airline has de delayed his flight they are claiming his weather they owe him accommodation and all of that but we took time over the phone to explain to him and he quite understood and he was his temperament was okay so passengers need to uh, you know keep this in mind all the time that situations can come up so even the cars you drive at home sometimes without warning they can they can fail. they just refuse to start in yeah. the <laughs> yeah. uh, before i come back to you as we look to wrap up it's also unrelated but uh you know with the advent of uh, citizen journalism and social media stories can be misconstrued. Yeah. There was a certain incident of an aircraft that skidded off the runway. 
and it was told in many versions by Nigerians who were on board that aircraft. We also saw the position of uh, the NCA and other sister agencies in resolving the issue with the investigation as informed by Barrister Festus Kiamo, the Minister of Aviation and Aerospace. But in, in incidences like this, what would be your call to the flying public in terms of how they tell the stories whilst waiting for the agency to put the records straight? Responsible reporting. That's important. Responsible reporting. Yes, a lot of people want to be on social media, you know, first to give the news and stuff like that. But it's important, important that you're responsible in your reporting, especially because um, there are a lot of factors involved in the situation. I know some time ago someone went on social media and put up a story of a flight that was delayed or cancelled and he wasn't even on that, that flight. flight yeah. You know, so he didn't even know the story behind the delay or whatever the disruption was. So it's important that, you know, whatever we're putting out there is the truth. And because most times you don't even know what's going on, try as much as possible to stick with what you know. Yes, there's a disruption. We have observed this. I don't know the details, you know, so that the people responsible and in fact, send it to the responsible body, not social media like the NCAA fan or NAMA or whatever agency is responsible for handling that situation instead of social media and, you know, creating more chaos in that situation. Well, I also like to get your part in shots as well as we look to wrap up the conversation. Yeah, in regards to what she just spoke of, you know, with regards to incidents like that, like the runway skid, um, the responsible government agency outside the NCA is the NSIB until they have investigated and put out a report uh, disregard any other information you, you hear because this is their role and things need to be investigated you cannot if you're not technical even technical people cannot just you know without due investigation draw a conclusion it has to be investigated that's why planes have black boxes for instance you know um, my parting words to, to the general public would be this that for the first time in Nigeria's history from top to bottom of the aviation um, chain, we have people that genuinely care about passengers. The Honorable Minister of Aviation, First of Kiyamu SAN, cares <laughs> you know, beyond words about consumer protection. My DG, Captain Chris Olana Jomo, is, um, he was incidentally the, um, Directly. he held <laughs> my, my position before he became acting DGCA. So consumer protection is his thing, it's his baby. He cares a lot. I'm a people person as well. Um, I've been in the media space for a long time. So relating with people, caring for people is my thing. And of course, um, upon assumption of office, I was privileged to be working with people that are passionate about the job, like if we're here, my general manager, equal law, and, and all of my CPOs who, who work tirelessly day and night. Our CPOs sleep at the airport. Where there are late flights coming in, especially international flights, 3 a.m., 2 a.m., my officers are sleeping there in the airport. Not, well, not lying down to sleep, but they are there at the airport at all times. Before the strike, for instance, we instructed all CPOs to spend the night at their terminal so that they'll be there earlier than the, the Labor Congress, you know, so that they'll be there to protect passengers who may arrive and, you know, be, uh, have their flights disrupted. So we want passengers to know that we genuinely care about them. We receive thousands of emails every day, complaints from passengers. And so where you do not get a quick response, understand that investigation is going on. Your case is definitely being looked into. And some cases take faster to resolve than others. So just know, you can send um, periodic reminders if you have to, but it doesn't mean that you are forgotten. We are working and will not stop working. Well, we wish you the best and the good work you have been doing and we'll continue to stay in touch with the NCAA to be able to disseminate this information to our viewing public. Yeah. We appreciate you. Thank, Thank you. you. Well, still on the show this morning, uh, before we hand over to our Vuja Sports Editor, when we come back, we'll look at the call